how could I possibly be expected to do real work on a day like this? Beautiful. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, everybody. Glad you could be with me on this beautiful March day. What can I say? High 60s in March. It's just great to put on some short sleeves and go outside. You know, this is a great time to paint trees. They'll be getting their leaves back soon in another month or so. They'll start budding and leafing out. These branch structures are really neat and I love painting them. I love finding the designs in them. I actually walked around this tree oh, half a dozen times at least. Wishing it were warmer, I could go out and paint it. And I found this angle, I just like the design. Mainly I just love the, the light and shadow that the different branches present you. The challenge here is finding the uniqueness in something like a tree. I mean, Goodness, how many tree paintings must there have been done out there? People paint trees ad nauseum. But I see a lot of generic trees, you know? I think the, the neat challenge is finding a tree angle, a branch arrangement, something, a, a casting of light that just gives you something unique, at least to you, you know, gives you something to to look at and say, oh, I want to paint that, you know. Sometimes I guess beginners will paint trees uh, just to say they're able to faithfully reproduce a tree, and that's fine, I, you know, that's a phase you go through, but that doesn't suffice for long. After a while, you're you're going to be thinking, okay, I, I can paint a tree. I've painted dozens of them. Uh, what do I do now? Well, just depends on, on what you love, of course, but you look for that, that really interesting design. You look for that angle, that combination of light and shadow that just really kind of makes you do a double take. This is really just a study and I'm putting it in my journal because it's, I guess, not that unique, but, you know, studies to me are just a way of saying, I like you, subject, and I want to get to know you better. I want to remember you past just a fleeting glance as I walk by. That's what we artists have going for us when we do journaling or sketching in a book, you know, it doesn't always have to be for something that hangs on a wall. It can be something that you put in a journal it's, and later say, yeah, I remember that tree. It's really cool because fill in the blank. Look for the unexpected. Look for that design, as I mentioned, that interesting design, but also look for the unexpected, a turn of a branch. Look at what nature's giving you. Nature will give you ideas that you usually can't or have not thought of on your own. That's one of the beauties of plein air painting. You know, you don't want to do something that won't be understood. You know, if somebody looks at it and say, what's that? You know, like a UFO in the sky. You don't want something dumb like that, but you know, look for those unique things. That's what really sets work apart. If you're doing it as a study like I am now, think of it not so much as, as something cool to add to your journal. I mean, that may be a side benefit, but think of what did I learn about this tree? What did I be, learn about trees in general? What can I take away from it that will, will really help mature my art? 
or my vision. Most of my palette here is just warm and cool grays, sort of a warmer sepia and a cooler Payne's gray. I'm inside now. Basically the clouds came in, it was starting to get dark and uh, harder to see. Um, I lost all the sunlight, so I was not really seeing any light and shadow. And I did the screen capture so I'd have a guide. I'm not going limb by limb by what I see. I'm only using this as a guide for some of the major limb structures, just to give me hints and clues about how to paint. But I'm inside now and I'm, I'm fiddling through the details of the rigger put in most of the basic color tones and values outside. Now I'm just going to go through and add some, some fine branches with the rigger and add some little light and shadow hints. One mistake beginners make a lot with trees is it can be turned into a generic thing. Look at the way branches come towards you and go away from you. That's one thing I don't see beginners do a lot. They'll paint a tree as if it were a cardboard cutout and all the branches go out to the side. Well, pay close attention, especially gnarly oaks like this, to how the branches go away from you go behind other branches, go around the back of the tree, come towards you, you'll communicate those with shadow. A lot of times it's helpful to paint these subjects in the sun because the, sh the sunlight will create the shadows that help the eye make out what it is they're seeing. But pay close attention to what you're actually seeing. Branches will will spread out and turn corners and angles and create spirals and all kind of things. And they'll all be different depending on the tree. Look for neat things like a series of branches all pointing downward or all lining up and going in the same direction. Well, as the weather gets warmer, if you're in an area where you can go outside and it's not too cold yet, I hope you'll be inspired to try some of these bare branch trees that have a lot of character. And uh, grab them before the leaves come out. Thanks so much guys for watching. Glad to have you with me. This was a help to you. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And we see you next time.